Jochen Schleser, from Saddle Fit for Life. Saddle Fit for Life is an organization worldwide and we're trying to educate people to protect their horse from ill-fitting saddles. Today we're at this beautiful place here in Fairfield, Equitopia, and we have a nice horse as a demonstration, which I'm going to highlight the shoulder blade here. Okay, and the top part is the cartilage. We talk a lot about shoulder freedom. What is shoulder freedom? Shoulder freedom is when the horse moves, there's nothing what impedes with the shoulder. Now, horse has metal in his mouth. Most horses who are ridden have shoes on the bottom. There's another piece of metal on the bottom. And there's another piece of metal on the horse's body, which is right here over the horse's back. If we don't have metal, then we have a rigid plastic tree or rawhide tree or fiberglass tree. And what does the tree do? It distributes the weight. Now, trees are made for a long time. But before tree survey was made, where we had bareback pads, or we rode bareback. We decided to go with trees because what it did, it protected the horse's back, spine, and give the rider uh, strength so the rider does not fatigue over long distance. But we want to make sure that the saddle doesn't pass the shoulder blade. We want to go at least four inches down and into the base of the withers we want to stay, make sure no saddle ever touches this triangle. When you go to your horse, you palpate softly towards the spine. You feel tip and texture, muscles, then something rubbery like your tendon, which is the ligaments, and then the, eventually the bone. So where the soft and the medium, not the bone, the ligament is, there is where you want to make sure your saddle doesn't hit the ligaments. Just like us, we have a spine, and in the spine is a hole, and in that hole all the nerves, the nerve endings comes out. Now the saddle cannot and should not bear any weight in this area. We have saddles who are extremely short, racing saddles, or saddles who are very long, sometimes you're making up to 24 inches for certain sports, or western saddles would have big skirts. But the weight-bearing surface has to stop here. I get into that a little later in the minute. Then we want to feel the edge of the longissimus dorsi. You can feel it nicely here. And you can see there is not, for this giant horse, there is not a lot of surface area left where the saddle can actually sit. Right here where that green field is, that is home. That is where you want to sit. And that's where your horse will bear the best, uh, the, the longest, the most amount of weight. There's a couple areas where the horse really doesn't like to be pinched or hurt at it. The edge of the latissimus muscle, which is approximately here. Well, this is a chestnut. I don't know how well my uh, red marker comes out here. And then down here, you've got another muscle, the pectoralis muscle. You can see how she's flickering when I touch her there. You definitely don't want to have the edge of the muscle hurt. So the best area where you can girth the horse is in this area. When we look at army saddles, western saddles, we look at saddles, uh, packing saddles, working saddles, most of them go with the example, if this is the widest part of the horse, so my hand, that's the top of the horse, that's the bottom, and that's the widest part. If the buckle comes just below the widest part, it pulls away from the horse, and if the saddle would roll, or the cowboy or the rider swings over from one side to the other, the buckle, would have to go over the widest part. So they find out that the longer billets, the shorter girth, which is just below here, without too much tension gives way more stability. Now that doesn't mean we can have jumping saddle or general purpose saddle with short billets, but then the buckle should be here. Where we absolutely don't want any kind of a pressure or any damage is that the saddle keeps damaging the cartilage. We do want to stay off this area. When I lift this leg, what happens is, in nature, here you see the tricep. Now when the leg goes back, see how that shoulder just went upwards, backwards? It needs to go underneath here. But what I see is this corner caught first. There is no weight bearing surface here, and it clips the front. The shoulder blade in motion, you can see it would go against that saddle tree and would damage the cartilage or it would ship that saddle that far back and then it wants to go forward again so it's this constant knocking and rubbing against it. 
maybe the best explanation is if my thumb is the tree and my shoulder blade, the horse shoulder blade is my shoulder blade, this kind of an action, the saddle doesn't care, but the cartilage or the shoulder in the long term will be fatal for this horse. I will show you now how you can see if the tree angle fits the shoulder angle. So if this is the shoulder angle, your tree angle needs to match the shoulder angle. So if this is the shoulder angle and this is the tree angle and the shoulder is in front of the saddle and the shoulder, as we know, wants to go through, this swishing sound needs to happen. If I would have the tree angle match the wither angle matches now, let's pretend my tree would be adjusted to this line. How is the shoulder coming through there? There is no way that the shoulder can go through and the space right here will be lost and right underneath that saddle, that is where the wither muscle will expand and needs to expand through it in order to lift the actual shoulder back. If the angle of the tree would be wide, that would do something bad to the shoulder. Oh, well, let's make the tree tight. We make the tree, the angle too tight, how would that work? Okay, so the shoulder freedom can only achieve if that is parallel. Okay, and that's how you can tell with Western saddle or English saddle. The best way for you to look at it, it's with a very inexpensive pen. We want to see this. You can see how this is parallel here. Flip it over. You can see these two pens are not lining up. So if I girth this down, this is the saddle, definitely too wide. This is the horse. You girth it down. Now this wants to come. How's that gonna work? If it's the right angle and you sit down, now the shoulder can slide. Does that make sense? On an English saddle, it goes pretty much the same. When I put it on, I prefer the saddles where the shoulder is cut out, the shoulder relief. I want to put it on here. I want to see if you put the, sh the horse towards the camera again, Caroline. Just, that's perfect. Okay, so again, you flip it over, put the other one. This is a little bit closer. Okay, here we know the angle matches. Okay, you can see where the billets are. They're already in the right spot. And now just bring your haunches a little bit over again and you can look at the rear of the saddle. It doesn't come to that nasty, nasty bucking reflex point. When you hit your elbow, and hopefully you did not crush your bursa sac, it's a tissue here that protects that bone, but you can take quite a bit of force with this here. You can take quite a bit of force or pressure on your muscle, very little very little force once you hit that reflex which is a funny bone which is not funny at all if that is touched then you have a reaction all the way to the pinky so if we know my danger spot is losing and damaging the cartilage pinching or biting my saddle i don't care if it's a race saddle western saddle english saddle if it pinches this withers a couple things will happen this here is the trapezius muscle. This particular muscle is fed with the cranial nerve 11. Over 60 million years, the stallion mounts the mare and bites her in the neck. What that will do, that nerve fires to the shoulder and the horse will not go forward that nerves will fire to the back muscle and the back goes hollow. It slows down the movement and there goes my shoulder freedom. The horse won't go forward. Between each vertebrae comes the nerves out to the different organs and muscle. Okay, we don't want to hit that area. I'm gonna show you quite a little closer why I want to stay off the spine. 
We have a nickname for that area. We call it the bucking reflex point. We can adjust saddles, make sure it's pressures nice and tight here, and we can get the horse into a pace, or we can get the horse into a four beat canter. So why would I want that? Because that's the last thing I want to destroy the natural movements. If I put a Western saddle on, you can see they fit the green area much, much better. When the tree sits on, when the horse moves, there should be no contact in the back. And a good Western saddle has the front flare up. Okay? For this particular horse, this tree, it's hard to get underneath. But I can look right through and it doesn't even touch the triangle. With the one inch Navajo pad, with the fleece underneath, it would probably sit here. And we will have, as you can see, much more weight bearing surface. Let me show you how a racing saddle looks like. The typical exercise saddle was designed to sit here, but mainly more designed for the jockey to have something what is anchored in order to stand so it doesn't roll when they go really, really fast around the corner. But if you look closely, where does it really sit? Totally in that red zone. So not very horse friendly. Needless to say that in today's time where we have technology such as fire up the cameras, we got thermography, we got um, heart monitors, and we have gait analysis. We can see, hmm, if we go with what the research veterinarians and body workers talk about it, that the green area is really the best area, let's redesign this and come to something what is much, much more horse friendly. So the racing saddle, the exercise saddle, becomes all of a sudden just like the old, 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 old first trees. Very, very flexible. And you can see it looks almost like a western tree here. Okay, so we have now something what distributes the weight better along the green line. It's flexible, it arches away, and it carries more in the green zone. So through this technology, I as a saddle maker, or you as a client, have a choice. Ignore signs, ignore what the horse tells you and continue what is popular, or listen to what is out there, and look how saddles can actually make a huge difference. You can see here, there's a big hump. When the leg goes forward, that hump is coming towards the saddle. The question is now, how? How is that possible when I put the girth on it and I sit on it with my 180 pounds, all this gets pressed down. How is that bone coming through it so it doesn't break? If we have a horse I like to ride, racing, Western, English, as a professional or as a pleasure rider, the horse has no choice what you choose. And all horses, no matter what you ride, has the same physiology, same anatomy. The very first thing is what you need is be having a saddle where you can sit quiet, comfortable without any discomfort, to be soft in the right spot. And then with an equine ergonomist or saddle ergonomist or through online education like that, learn the th main points. Number one, stay off the zone where the horses or animals bite each other so the other animal becomes numb. You want your horse numb when you come out of this racing gate or barrel racing, horse racing, whatever? No. Stay off that triangle, the worst area the saddle ever can hit. Number two, where do your billets line up and where is your girth? We have this spine. I cannot tell you how pleased I am. I've traveled the world now over three times. Never, ever have I seen a Western saddle what deviated from the number one rule. There's no Western saddle, no matter how expensive or inexpensive, what forgot the most important rule. This has to be a man's fist, four inches, 10 centimeter wide, because you have to stay off the ligaments and the nerve. We see a lot of saddles, not in Western. We haven't seen yet a saddle who deviated, but in English saddles, what we have channels who are very, very narrow. And that is really, really bad because if I hit any of those reflex points, the horse will instantly clinch and I can make a horse hollow. So you can see the shape here and then the cartilage would be on top. That, when the horse moves, needs to slide 
underneath the shoulder, underneath the gullet plate. So I believe there is not a single Western saddle maker or a single English saddle maker who purposely makes saddles who hurt the horse. What I believe is that there is a lot of lost knowledge and this is the purpose of today and this is what we want to go, not by opinion, by science, common sense and through history that we show we can help these horses a lot. So hopefully this was helpful. Thank you very much for signing in. Till next time.